So good afternoon. My name is Solène and my presentation uh, will focus on the mechanisms that exist to verify a state's compliance with the international obligations that bind them in the field of fisheries. Verifying compliance is very important for several reasons. First, we can have the best rules, the best science, the best policy advice possible, but if states don't comply with the rules, that's really no all for nothing. Then, um, the nature of the fishing field uh, is such, it happens at sea, and um, it's a very globalized industry, that there is a high risk of non-compliance. And then finally, compliance is costly. So if we don't verify what happens, those actors that um, that do comply are at an, at an economic disadvantage. At the global level, there is no one mechanism to verify that states respect the obligations that are binding them. But states do play different roles. And for some of those roles, there are procedures in place. So, so we'll start with um, looking at states' various roles and obligations briefly. So first and foremost, the flag state. Every vessel must be registered in a country and then that state has to ensure, has to control that vessel and ensure that it respects the conservation and ma management measures, wherever the vessel is. Then there is the coastal state, which is responsible to ensure that the resources under its jurisdiction, here fish, are not overexploited. Then, well, fish do not respect borders, so it's very rare that they stay just within one coastal state's zone. So states that are involved in fishing, be they flag states or coastal states, must cooperate uh, for the conservation and management of fish stocks. They usually do so through RFMOs, it's the only abbreviation I will use, it's regional fisheries management organizations. And finally, we have the port state. If the state in question has ratified the relevant 2009 treaty, then it must deny entry into port and or lending and use of port services to those, state, uh, to those vessels that have been involved in illegal activities. So here you see a complicated table that looks at all the mechanisms that exist at the global level for these categories of roles that states can have. Um, and it's a very, you can see from that list that things are very different and it's a very piecemeal approach. And you can see, for example, that um, some mechanisms have been developed on the basis of soft law or developed in an ad hoc manner. So states can but are not obliged to undergo a performance review. That, that means they're voluntary. It doesn't mean that it's all bad. Like, for example, the cooperation through our FMOs, um, the, the procedure to review performance is so well established that if states decided not to organize a performance review, then there would be an outcry. And there is even a recent RFMO where um, there is a binding obligation now to do a performance review every five years. And under the Port State Treaty, uh, there is also the binding obligation to review the implementation on a regular basis and that is part of the same treaty where the rules are uh, located. But there are two main issues that remain. Um, first and foremost, coastal states, they have a crucial role to play for the sustainability of fish resources and they are not, it's not possible to hold them accountable in any way. And the other problem is that you may have a performance review, you may verify the implementation, but then uh, what do you do on the basis of those recommendations? And there is no clear and comprehensive way uh, for, uh, to, to verify, to have a follow-up of the recommendations implementation and potentially even to sanction 
uh, under re under performance uh, if it continues or failure to implement changes. So in conclusion, there is a large gap in terms of good governance and accountability. There is no thorough, binding, independent verification that states respect their obligations. And there is no comprehensive response to non-compliance incidents. So what can we do? Um, ideally, one would see the development of a comprehensive and binding audit for states involved in fisheries. But in the meanwhile, and more realistically, um, one should improve the existing global mechanisms and develop and or encourage best practices at the regional level. Uh, it's also important in terms of good governance to ensure um, to promote transparency in order to ensure public accountability. One could finally um, develop a set of measures, so continue <coughs> implementing a set of measures in order to respond to non-compliance situations. One would be to encourage some key states to litigate when they're facing blatantly non-compliant states, and that would allow to tackle impunity. And one can also mm -hmm. encourage the continuation of targeted and fair trade measures uh, used as a sanction. Thank you. <laughs>